and welcome back to church school. But first, pop quiz. Did Jesus write this book? No. Did Jesus write this book? No. Did Jesus write this book? Says God. No. Did Jesus write this book? No. Did he write this book? No. What about this book? No. Well, what about this book? Did Jesus write this? He didn't. It's actually a trick question. Jesus never wrote any book. Ever. But even though he didn't write a book, we have a whole bunch of recorded phrases that he said. That's right, someone thought that everything that Jesus said was so good and so important that they wrote it down after he had already died. And then they bound it up in a book from a bunch of different authors and they put it in the Bible. So today what we're gonna do is prepare for our next season. You see, after next week, we're gonna start a season called Lent. And Lent is a really wonderful time in the Christian church where we either give something up that we don't wanna do anymore, so maybe we give up selfishness, or we give up eating too many hamburgers, or we add something in. So many of you will take part in our Lenten workshop called 40 Days of Delight. And what that will do is you'll add something in, either an act of kindness, or a nice conversation starter, or a creative exercise into each and every day so that we can get closer to God. That's right, we're already done with our whole series about Jesus as a child. And I hope you had a lot of fun with it. And I hope you're still working on your kids' ultimate quarantine bucket list. But now to prepare for this season where we talk a lot about Jesus and how he did all these really cool things, we're going to prepare to ask, why do we even care what Jesus did? And one really good way to do that is by listening to the things that Jesus said and the lessons that have been recorded in books for thousands of years now. And so you'll pull out your children's Bible or your handy dandy handout. Let's read our story. It's called Things Jesus Said. When you're growing in God's way, you are like a bright light. Others can learn about God because of you. So don't hide your light. Let everyone see what God is like because of the way you are living. Some people have told you to hate your enemies. They say if someone is bad to you, you should try to hurt them. But I tell you something different. This is Jesus talking. Love your enemies. Be kind to those who hurt you. Don't just be nice to your friends. Anyone can do that but be good to those who are mean to you. If someone asks for help, help them gladly. But when you help, don't look for praise. Don't say, look how wonderful I am. When you give money to help someone, don't tell anyone. God will know you did the right thing and you'll know that you are growing in God's way. Don't worry what might happen to you. Don't worry about what you will eat or what you will wear or where you will live. God knows you need all these things. Instead, look at a flower. See how beautiful it is? The flower doesn't work. The flower doesn't worry. The flower doesn't have any money at all. But even King Solomon, with all of his finest clothes, wasn't as beautiful as a flower. If God loves a flower, think of how much more God loves you. So don't worry about what will happen to you. God knows what you need and God will always be with you. Finally, there is one thing to remember always. Be kind to others, just as you'd like them to be kind to you. Now, you've probably heard a lot of these sayings before, either in school or in church school or back at home in your family. 
especially that last one. You ever heard the golden rule? Do to others what you would have them do to you? See, that's one of just one of the amazing lessons, the amazing sayings that we got as a world just because of Jesus. He's the one who invented that phrase and that concept that now we call the golden rule. And so in listening to some of these things, we might be aware that they're kind of wacky, that they're not how the world works usually. For example, when Jesus says, love your enemies, that doesn't make sense, does it? If someone's mean to me, I'm going to be mean to them. That's the way a lot of people think. And that's the way the whole world thought until Jesus came along and he said, actually, let's be kind to everyone. Let's love everyone, including and especially all of you. You see, Jesus kind of walked around with these love glasses on and he just loved everyone. And that didn't mean that he couldn't teach hard lessons. He often, as we're going to see in these next few weeks, was actually, he called people out. He told them when they were wrong, but he always did so out of the goodness of his heart and out of reverence, which means, you know, right worship and right relationship with God. And so we're so grateful that we have all of these recorded sayings and the discussion questions because of that are really just how can we act on these words? Because as I'm sure you all know, it's really easy to say something. I can say till I'm blue in the face, I love people, I love people. But what happens when someone's mean to me or when I don't get what I want? What happens then? That's when it gets really hard to follow Jesus, but that's exactly when Jesus wants us to follow him most. So here are a few questions that I hope you think about at home and with your family. First, what are some ways that you can be a bright light in the world? Jesus tells us that we can be bright lights. How can you? Another one, Jesus tells us to love our enemies. Who are your enemies? How can you love them better? Is it difficult? I sometimes find it difficult. Then Jesus tells us not to worry because God knows that he can take care of you. And if he takes care of little flowers, how much more so will he take care of you, a human being, a good kid? What are some things that worry you? Do you ever worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear tomorrow at school? Think of the flowers, he says, and how they're beautiful, even though they don't worry or work. What are some things that worry you and how do Jesus's words make you feel about that? And finally, what do you, why do you think we talk about Jesus so much in church and in the world? What makes him so special? Do these words resonate in your heart? Do you hear them? Do they sound right to you? I think they might, or if not, then we can reflect on why they don't feel right, because it's a lot easier to hate our enemies than to love them. So this week, our activity is gonna be a, a little different. There's, we're gonna color. We're gonna do an activity sheet with a word search and with decoding puzzles. And we do that not because it's a waste of time, but because I want you to sit down and color over these words. Oh, hello, this is my dog. Hi, Coco, say hi. She wants a little snuggle. She wants a little love from Jesus. Yeah, don't you? Don't you? But we want you to reflect on these words as you color, but that's not enough, just like we said. Then I want you to try turning those words, those lessons that you're learning, those things that you're coloring into action. So there's one last question. It's how can you do these things? Maybe you plant a flower to remind yourself that God protects even the flowers. Maybe you do one chore and don't tell your mom or dad or your brother or your sister or anyone about it. You do it completely in secret, a really good deed. Or maybe you write a nice note or draw a nice picture for that one kid in your class you don't really like that much. There are a lot of different things we can do to be more like Jesus. 
And this next season of Lent, we're going to look at all the different actions he does and all of the really cool things that lead up to the reason that we even have a cross in churches, to the reason why we say Jesus rose again from the dead. Because not only was he the son of God, not only was he a miracle worker, but he also was just a very, very wise teacher. And so he's our teacher this week. I hope that you will pray with me now. So follow along. Coco, do you want to pray? She keeps licking my hand. Dear God, now you repeat, dear God, thank you for all of your many lessons. Thank you for sending us Jesus as an example of how to live. Please help me to be a light to the world. Teach me to love my enemies. Give me a generous heart and hands. Take away my worries. Help me to follow the upside down ways of Jesus so that I may join him in making the world a better place. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Also new at church school this week is right after this. Stay tuned. Ava Pezzamenti, one of the coolest people I know, is going to sing a song about love because that's what Jesus would do. And there will be a new song every week, or maybe not a new song, but a repeated song. So I hope you enjoy and sing along and that you follow some of the things that Jesus said this week. Bye.